Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton, and this is another Get That C quick tip for drawing a graph. In the first of these videos, you should have got some axes drawn like this. We didn't care what the numbers that needed to go on those axes were. We just drew the axes blank like that. That's always going to work out for you. So start out every time like that. When you've got that done, then you can look at your results table. But again, I'm not going to care about what these numbers are for the moment. I'm just interested in what the headings are. This left-hand column should be your independent variable, and that always goes on the horizontal axis. Make sure you include the units as well. So I've come up with some dummy information here. I've said time in minutes against temperature in degrees Celsius. Here's our dependent variable, and that, as you may have guessed, goes up the vertical axis. And again, don't forget those units. If you forget the units, you are throwing away a mark. Usually these graphs are out of four. Uh, so you get a mark for getting this axis right, a mark for getting that axis right, a mark for plotting the points correctly, and a mark for drawing a line through them correctly. If you forget the units, you are chucking away a mark. And it's a mark which is really easy to get because you already have the units written down here in your table of results. So let's get these headings onto both of those axes. We have time in minutes and temperature in degrees Celsius. Still haven't put any numbers on here. Still don't care what the numbers that need to go on here are. You can get all of this done before you even start worrying about how to fit those numbers on. Finally though, we are going to have to worry about fitting those numbers on. Usually the best one to put on first is down here at the origin, zero. That means zero on both axes. If it helps, or if it helps you remember, then feel free to write one zero there and another zero there instead. I would strongly recommend against trying to do that thing that you may have learned in your maths GCSE with a little zigzag line to skip some numbers. Almost always goes wrong. It can be useful, but if you are not 100% certain about how to draw a graph, I would just avoid it. This is going to work out right. So the last thing we need to do is look at what these numbers are and figure out how we're going to fit them on this scale we've already drawn. And the trick to this is find your biggest number. Don't worry about all these other ones, just find the biggest one. That's the only one you really need to worry about. Biggest one here for time is five. That's normally the bottom one in this uh, column. That's normally a fairly easy one. So five, we need to figure out how we can fit that on. We could go up in ones, one, two, three, four, five. That'd fit nicely. We could try going up in every other square as one. So we could go from zero here, one, two, three, four. It's not quite gonna work. We'd only get to four and a half. Don't be tempted to try and squeeze an extra one in there again chucking away a mark if you do. So this would be the best way to do that. You just go one, two, three, four, and five. Don't worry if you don't go all the way across the page. Don't worry if you've got a bunch of unused marks here. That's absolutely fine. So long as you're going past the halfway point, that's all you need to do. If you're not going past the halfway point, you could double your scale. You could have put more numbers on there. So let's have a look at temperature. It's a little bit trickier here. So we've got 21, 36, 48, 58, 37, and 70. The largest number here is 70. So that's the only one we're interested in. All we've got to do is figure out how to count up to 70 on this vertical scale. We could go up in ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, but obviously that isn't going to fit. If ones don't work, try twos. So 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, fairly obviously not going to work again. If 1s and 2s don't work, the next thing you need to go for is 5s. Don't be tempted to try going up in something like 3s or 4.5s or 7s. It's going to make it extremely difficult for you to plot the points. Stick to 1s, 2s, 5s, and if they don't work, 10s, 20s, 50s, or 100s, 200s, 500s, or 1000s, 2000s, 5000s. Each time, start with a number that starts with a one, a two, or a five. The way the graph paper is laid out, it makes it so much easier for you, and it makes it so much easier for the person who's marking the graph as well. So ones, twos, and fives, that's the only ones you should be dealing with. So let's try fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, it's not going to work. 
just a little bit short. So, ones, twos and fives haven't worked. Let's go up in tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. It goes more than halfway across the page and it gets up to our biggest number. Let me put that on here. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And there we go, our axes are complete. Each one of those in an assessed piece of practical work would get you a mark. Make sure that you've got the label on there, make sure that you've got the units, and make sure that you've gone up using a sensible number system. So ones, twos, or fives. And if you've already drawn your axes, like I told you in the previous lesson, then they should be evenly spaced and there shouldn't be any problems. Good luck in your GCSEs, everyone. And if this video was useful to you, please use the buttons below to like, subscribe, or share it with anyone else you think could also use a little help. Thanks for watching.